Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. WWDC is just a few days away, and with it, Apple are probably going to release a new version of iPadOS, which will be iPadOS 14. Um, I've been using my iPad Pro for a while, and I recently jailbroke it with Uncover. And this is my list of tweaks and things that I think Apple should steal and put into iOS, iPadOS 14. So let's go. So first on my list is AppPad. Um, it's a free tweak. I'm going to leave all the repos in the description below. One of the features it has, if you have an app that doesn't support the iPad and it's just an iPhone app, you can have that expanded. So this is TubeBuddy, which I use. Um, this is how it looks without AppPad. Um, it's just an iPhone app squished into the iPad screen. Um, and it also lets you do split view and slide over for all apps. Um, so one of the apps that I use quite a bit is BBC News. Um, and you can see that it doesn't support slide over or split screen. Um, it only does full view. Um, so yeah, so let's get AppPad open and we'll see what they all look like. I already installed AppPad, but I disabled it just to show you what it looks like without. Okay, so now if I open TubeBuddy, you can see it's full screen. Um, not all of the elements stretch properly, but generally it's pretty good. And it's definitely much better than having it as just a normal iPhone app. Um, it also works on stuff like Instagram. Um, it doesn't work very well on the feed. But if you want to use it to manage your profile or anything, um, you know, that works pretty well. You can get all your stories, you can add photos pretty easily. Um, so yeah, all, all good. All stuff that you could do with just a normal iPhone app, but it's much easier when it's uh, full screen. So I was saying about split screen and slide over. So now I'll take BBC News and it works straight away and you can resize it as you would, like as if it supports it properly. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, so it works for every app and it's free as well. So like I said, I'll leave a link down below for the repo. Um, okay, so moving on to the second one, we've got App Store Plus um, Plus. So this one, basically what it allows you to do is if you search for something, let's say, I don't know, Facebook. Firstly, you get rid of App Store ads. So you can see there's no ads when you search, which is really handy. If you tap and hold on, on open or install, you can choose to block updates for apps. You can downgrade them to different versions or you can do advanced install. Um, I'm not really sure what the advanced install does, but the other two features are handy, especially on stuff like Facebook, where maybe they've released an app version that you don't like. You can just quite easily go back. You just click on upgrade slash downgrade and you get all the versions that are still available on the app store. So you can go like really far back if you want to. Um, so that's pretty nice. I tried to keep this list of stuff that maybe Apple would potentially do, but this one is a bit out there, but um, it'd be nice if they did anyway. Um, okay, yeah, so number three. So these are just in alphabetical order. There's not in order of how important I think they are, but this one is probably one of my favorites. Um, so this is called Auto Unlock X. So if I just go to the settings on this one, um, basically what it does is it gives you all these extra options for when you unlock with Face ID. Um, so let me, I'll turn it off first. So this is how you'd normally unlock. You can see Face ID's picked me up and then you have to swipe away the lock screen. Now if I put Auto Unlock on, all I've got to do is wait for Face ID to see me and I'm in straight away. Um, so it cuts out the extra step of swiping um, and it makes it much faster. Um, I, really, I really, really like this one. I think I wish that Apple gave you the option to do that uh, by default. Um, and you can have it set to disable if you've got notifications, so maybe you want to read those first, or uh, if you've got music playing. Um, so I have those on, so if that gives you, so you still get access to your lock screen controls basically if you need them. But if you've got nothing to see on your lock screen, then you just get straight in, straight back in, and it works anywhere. So even if you're in another app, um, and yeah, you just op again open, you can see it straight away. Um, it's really really quick. It works really well, um, and I really like it. Um, so all, all, all of them so far have been free. So again, I'll leave the link to them down below. So at number four, we've got copy lock. Um, so this one is $2.49, uh, $2.49, um, but it's, it's really good. So basically it's a clipboard manager for iPadOS. Um, so if I open a new note here, for example, um, and you can see I've got this, you've got the normal undo, redo, copy, but then here you've got copy log. Um, so if you tap it, you can see that it's already got stuff that I've copied in the past. One thing I really like, it tells you what app you copied it from as well. And then it tells you what the content is. And look, so this is going back for five days already. Um, and you can start stuff as well if you need quick access to it. Um, and the way they've integrated it, it feels like it's really already part of iOS. 
um, iPadOS. Um, for productivity, this is great because if, you, for example, if you're just a normal system, let's say um, I've got a few lines of text. Obviously, this wouldn't be that hard to copy multiple times, but <laughs> but you'd have to select all, copy, go to your next bit, paste, go back, copy the next line which is quite hard to do now <laughs> without a trackpad, etc., etc. But now what you can do, you can just copy each line individually. Um, and you just go, you can see you get the notification there as well. Then you just go to copy log and you've got them all here and you can paste them in as many times as you need. Um, which is great. For, it's great for copying stuff off uh, websites, but that you maybe want to do multiple sections um, at a time. Um, so this one, I think, is well worth paying the two forty nine. The way it integrates with iPad OS is great. I mean, it looks like something Apple would make themselves. Um, so yeah, again, another one I really like. And yeah, this one's also really high on my list of things I'd like them to implement themselves. Okay, so um, number five, we've got double tap lock. Um, so this one's pretty self explanatory. Um, so one of the things about the iPad Pro, especially the 12.9 inch, the device is quite big. Um, so usually if you want to lock the device, you, you know, push the hardware button here, which is fine. But sometimes it's a bit of a stretch depending on how you're holding the iPad. What you can do with double tap lock is just anywhere on your home screen that's not taken up by an icon, just double tap and it locks. This works really well with Auto Unlock X. Um, it becomes very seamless getting in and out of your iPad um, just with basically taps. So you can see how easily I'm getting in and out with just these two combined. Um, and it makes it just makes things feel a bit quicker and a bit easier to do. Um, this is another free tweak, um, so again, I'll leave all the links will be down below. Okay, so this next one is probably one of my favourites. Um, so it's called Evil Scheme. Um, I don't know why it's called Evil Scheme because it's really the opposite of evil. Maybe it's to do with what it fixes. So in iPad OS and iOS, you can't set default apps. You have to use Apple's apps like Safari, uh, Mail, etc., as your default email and browser. Um, Evil Scheme basically fixes that. So you can see I've got a couple of things set up for Microsoft Edge uh, to be my browser. Um, and you can see it looks a bit complicated with all these actions, but it's basically, it automatically sets it up for you. You just go to, you just go to add new, and then you can choose stuff like uh, if you want Google Maps to be a mapping app, it knows what all the iOS commands are for maps. And then it just adds that as your thing. I've already got Google Maps in there, so I'll delete it. Um, so yeah, I've set Microsoft Edge to be my browser, Gmail to be my email app. So let me try and find a way to show you this. Um, so there's a link here. So you can see this is, goes to the in-app browser. This button here would usually send you straight into Safari. But if I open it here, you can see it opens Microsoft Edge, um, which is great. Um, Edge is the browser I use on my Mac. It's the browser I use on my phone. So being able to use it as a default it's really handy. Um, I've heard some rumors that Apple might be bringing something like this to the new version of iPadOS and iOS. Um, so fingers crossed, this is one that they decide to steal. But if not, yeah, as a jailbreak tweak, it's free again. Um, this one's from the Dynastic repo. Um, it's another one I really hope they implement themselves, but for now I'm pretty happy with Evil Scheme. So the next one, so you might have noticed already from the video, I don't have the gesture bar at the bottom. Um, this because I think on the iPad, it's basically a waste of time. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. If you if I turn my tweak off, so this one's called Hide Bar X. Um, so let's find it here. So I'm going to turn it off. So you can see that I've got the nav bar back. Um, let's get into a few apps. So whether you swipe from the bottom of the gesture bar, or if you swipe from the side here, or the side over here, you know, it all actually does the same thing. The only thing this bar does, it just takes up space on the screen. You know, look, it's blocking some of the text there, especially on the iPad. I think this is a complete waste of space. So I was pretty happy to see this tweak, hide bar X. Um, it's very, it's very, very straightforward. There's no configuration. Um, literally all it does is hide that bar. So you can see, you can see from me navigating around that everything works completely fine without having the bar there. Uh, it really is just a waste of space. So having the option to get rid of it with this tweak is really great. Um, and again, something that I really like Apple to implement in the future. So another one of my favorite tweaks that I want them to copy, this one is one of the ones that I put in the category of probably never gonna happen, 
but it's called Insta Launcher 2. Um, so this one, I think it costs three dollars, um, which is for what it does, is worth it. Um, so normally, if you want to you know, open more apps, you go back to your home screen, find it here, or you search, etc. You know, it, it can be a bit tedious. What this does, it, you can see this little this little bar here in the right corner. It offers you an, a new launcher. So you just tap and hold, slide out, and then you've got an alphabetical list where you can just go to any app you want. Um, so if I wanted to open Photoshop, for example, I just scroll down to P, scroll across, go up to Photoshop, and then there you go, straight into Photoshop. Um, it'd be nice if you could maybe drag the app straight into um, like the multitasking view, um, but even without it, it's still pretty good. Um, being able to have quick access to all that stuff is it's really handy. So the ninth app on my list is called iPad Bar 13. Um, so this one is configurable. It basically lets you tweak your status bar. Um, so one of the things I've got on, uh, I've got the percentage number in the battery. So rather than having a separate battery icon and the percentage bar, I mean, to be honest, it's quite hard to see on the camera, I think, because it's quite small, um, but it's there. And then on the left, I've got the full date and the time with seconds and also my network speed. Um, and you can customize quite a lot of stuff. I think you get more options if you're on an iPhone because you can change like your carrier and stuff. Or if you have a 4G SIM in your iPad, you can do that as well. Um, and you can also change the text size. So I've got them both the same on both sides. So again, that's pretty nice. Um, and you do also get the options to hide certain icons as well. So if you don't want to see your VPN icon, for example, you can turn that off. If you don't want to see Wi-Fi, you can turn that off. Anything you want to turn off, you can from the status bar. Um, so it just lets you have a bit more control over it. Um, so again, that's something I'd really love to see built in because on my phone, my OnePlus 8 Pro, that's the kind of stuff is built into Oxygen OS. Um, so I'd love Apple to offer the same kind of customization on the iPhone and the iPad. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed. Let's see how that goes. And then at number 10, I've got shy labels. So you might have noticed again that I've got no icon labels, um, but when I scroll, they come back um, and now that they fade away. Um, so I really like this clean look because most of the icons, I mean, you see like Harmony has the name Harmony in it. This is pretty clearly Photoshop. Some of them, I guess this one is the LumaFusion one is a bit more obscure. But generally, once you've placed your apps on your home screen, you start to know which apps are which without needing to read the labels. So this is really clean. You can also hide the names on folders. So you can have a delay or you can have it permanently hidden, but I like having the delay. I mainly like having the delay for the folders. So you can scroll across and you quickly see the folder names if you need to, and then they fade away again to give you that nice clean look. Maybe again, this is one that Apple might not do, but it's a nice addition anyway, because I, I do the same thing on my phone. I have all the um, icon names hidden. Um, so it just it just makes the it just makes your home screen look a bit cleaner, really. Um, and yeah, they're there if you need them to be. So there's one tweak I'll give a special mention to. It's not really a iOS 14 thing that they could bring in because Picture in Picture is already here. I think it's just really a dispute between you, uh, Google and Apple on what codec YouTube uses. Um, but you know most apps like Netflix etc. You can do Picture in Picture on the iPad, so the video will come up on a little screen. YouTube you can't do that, but there's this app called uh, UP, UPIP. Um, it basically just gives you this extra button here and then YouTube works in picture in picture, which is really handy and you can expand it. It works basically using the full system thing. It's really handy. I don't know the exact what reasons why it doesn't work. It'd be nice if they could figure that out and maybe as a nice treat for iPad OS 14, we could get that feature finally enabled. So there are other tweaks that I use and other apps that jailbreaking stuff that I use that I've left out of this list because they're not necessarily things that are sort of system facing that I could see Apple doing. Um, but if you think I've missed something out, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely check it out. Um, and if you've got any questions about any of the tweaks, I'm definitely going to leave my iPad jailbroken for a while, at least until iPad OS 14 comes out. Um, so yeah, so if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I'll leave a link to some tutorials maybe if you're struggling with it as well. Um, but yeah, if you like the video, let me know in the comments, uh, give me a like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.